Hey, Classic Duff here, and uh, a little bit late, but welcome to part two of the Modern Industrialization walkthrough. Right, so at this point, you should have multiple blast furnaces going, steam blast furnaces, uh, producing you a decent supply of steel, because you're going to need it. Um, the next step is probably going to be upgrading some, maybe just your most handy ones, but potentially all of your bronze machines into the steel versions, and it's going to be a little bit of a tedious recipe for now. Uh, so it's made up of lots of these different bits and pieces, which are made up of lots of different pieces, which you get from lots of different pieces. Uh, uh, but at the end of it, you should be getting to the point where you can make a few steel gears to make a few steel casings uh, to eventually, if I assembled the right amount of stuff, I didn't. Uh, we need to make, okay, I didn't, I didn't get all the stuff. But then, ah, oh, would you look at that, all the stuff. Uh, so eventually that'll let you make your steel upgrades. Now, luckily these are kind of, you know, you get two for one recipe, but yeah, it's going to be a lot better making these in the future with assemblers. But for now, you have to craft it like this. And to apply these things, you're going to need to get yourself a smithing table, uh, just the standard Minecraft one. And then you need to pick up the machines that you're you're wanting to upgrade. You know, I think maybe starting with the boiler, the macerator, uh, probably the furnace, you know, maybe the compressor. I feel like those are maybe the ones I'd start with, although we've got enough upgrades, so we'll do the whole lot. And it's pretty simple. Chuck the machine in there. Get the steel machines out, and these things just, you know, run a bit faster. And uh, then we just got to figure out exactly where these went. And yeah, it looks like it's actually remembered that all the pipes are hooked up. Cool. Oh, definitely the water pump. We're definitely going to want to upgrade that water pump as well. And now that we're on the topic of upgrading things to steel, now might be a good time to start upgrading your different hatches to the steel versions. Um, this thing ran out of water. Yeah, so multi-block machines with steel hatches do go faster. Uh, and let's let's actually test this out. And the recipes for these steel hatches aren't uh, anything too difficult. Steel machine casings, so I mean, yeah, tedious. Lots of steel, lots of steel. Hence why you're gonna want multiple of these. But if we check this over to the steel versions of the hatches uh, and we happen to have some stuff happening that's going that fast it's definitely slightly faster <laughs> it is not the easiest to tell no 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 it's definitely faster it's definitely faster so upgrading your hatches to the to the higher tier um, does make things go faster. And that also works for um, future tiers of item hatch, but um, I guess we upgrade the rest of these too. And the next steel machines we're gonna talk about are the unpacker and the packer. Now, admittedly, these are kind of more handy if you don't have any other auto crafting type mods in the pack, like your um, applied logistics or refined storage. But if you're wanting to play through with just modern industrialization, I suspect you're probably gonna be using a few of these. So we've got a couple of things these can do. Let's let's look at the unpacker first. So if you regret your life decisions, um, you could turn your steel uh, machines back into the bronze one and get your upgrade back. Maybe that's something you want to do if you've uh, realized that you've upgraded the wrong machine and you really want that upgrade back and don't want to have to craft it again. Um, but there's also lots of other recipes like turning your big dusts into smaller ones and blocks into smaller things, works with ingots as well could be handy in some sort of automation type situation. Uh, and then you've got the packer. Now we've got a couple of options here uh, because there are also these templates you use for the packer. Uh, but if we look at the packer itself, yeah, there's obviously some vanilla type recipes here. Uh, maybe you're wanting to make sandstone because you've got a cobblestone generator making sand. Can we actually get a cobblestone generator? Oh, you totally could with using a mixer with water and lava. Yeah, so you could get a cobblestone generator and start turning that sand into sandstone if you needed a bunch of sandstone for something. 
and, and lots of other of those, those types of recipes. And then we start to see these packing templates or packer block templates. So this is specifically for turning things into blocks. Uh, yep, pretty straightforward. And then you've got the double ingot template. Now this is potentially handy if you're getting a whole bunch of ingots. Maybe not that useful right now. But you can store your ingots in double form. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to do this instead of blocks if you're just storing it. Uh, but you can, of course, use it to make like double plates. Uh, and potentially, it takes the same amount of time as a regular plate. So you could speed up some processes using the double ingots instead of your single ones. Not something I've played around with personally, but if you're wanting your factory to be a little bit more efficient, it could be the way to go. And then, one of the big milestones in modern industrialization is not having to mine by hand anymore. Uh, well, yeah, if you can automate some other bits and pieces. Uh, you are going to need Invar Dust, which is just a, a mix of recipe of Iron Dust and Nickel Dust, which you should find mining. Uh, and you're going to have to get yourself some, some Diamond Dust, which, you know, that's just diamonds in a macerator. Um, yeah, going to take you a while to craft this. Uh, there we go. So difficult, so difficult. Uh, and actually, when you're holding this, if you hold the wrench... Um, it'll show you the other items you need. A whole bunch of these steel blocks, again, similar to the blast furnaces and even coke ovens, you can share wall blocks. Uh, but if this is your first quarry, you'll probably be pretty happy with just the first one. Um, so yeah, just those steel, steel casings. You're going to need a bunch of them. Let's grab a bunch of these. Uh, some steel pipe machine casings. You know, steel curved plates, steel machine casings. That's just bunch of compressing you're going to have to do and a couple of chains and item input and output hatches but uh, let's let's just let's just assemble this uh, very handy that it shows you like these ghost blocks so you know where to put things now if you're getting to this point in the game you probably already discovered that uh, you don't have enough steam from your steam boiler and um, you're just going to have to make more of those small ones, although once we get to analog circuits, uh, that's when you'll be able to upgrade to something a little bit better. Uh, but for now, you're just going to have to put up with uh, running multiple small versions of the, the steam boiler. Nice. And now this thing is ready to go. Now, it's not quite that simple. The, the quarry by itself isn't going to mine anything, uh, you need to make some drill heads. Now the easiest one to make is the copper drill head. It's just a whole bunch of copper, but potentially not the most useful one. Um, it's used for making copper drills, which uh, you could use for getting water from an oil drilling rig, which we're not going to be making yet, uh, or getting you like some stone blocks. So handy if you're doing a bunch of building, but probably not actually the one you want to make first. That is going to be the bronze drill head for making bronze drills. Use in the steam quarry for getting actual ores so you don't have to go mining. So you get some decent stuff here. You'll notice it's missing like diamonds and other bits and pieces. They do come later when you get to the stainless steel drill. Uh, well, actually the next one is the steel drill, um, which that gets you like diamonds and antimony and nickel and other bits and pieces. You're going to want a bit of bauxite, but you're probably starting with the bronze drill, making bronze drill heads for getting all this stuff. Uh, these are, yes, kind of expensive, like that's a lot of bronze. You also have a 4% chance of consuming the drill head, so it just voids it. Uh, so yeah, after roughly 96 times mining new stuff, it, it'll get consumed, but of course it's a random chance, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's not exactly going to be that, and then the most chance you've got is a 40% chance of getting iron ore, so yeah, you do have to craft a lot of these. Uh, if you're setting up some auto crafting, um, you're going to be putting them into these, these item hatches, and using your mouse wheel, you can control how many things can go in here. Uh, so you're probably going to be wanting to set this pretty low. Maybe you just keep two in the stock so that you're not having to craft 128 of these bronze drill heads, which when you're just getting started or at this point of the game, that's that's going to be pretty expensive. And uh, yeah, probably worth doing this or just crafting them manually. 
Uh, also worth mentioning, you probably don't need to get multiple quarries with the same drill head. When we get a bit further on in modern industrialization, you can speed these machines up a lot, a lot. But uh, let's just grab a bronze drill head. So I've just gone through the effort of crafting it. Uh, and this should fire up because we have steam. I mean, if if I'd actually connected the the pipes, if we actually connect these like that, so smooth, uh, the bronze drills away. And yeah, it's not the fastest thing. This efficiency is actually how machines speed up, but we'll we'll look at that in the future. Uh, but eventually this will finish and then we'll have that 40% chance of actually getting something and today we got nothing I uh, probably want to hook the chest up um, and maybe do some auto extracting uh, into your other chest although kind of put that kind of put that in a weird place that's a little bit better and hey we got our first couple of ores oh it, it used the drill head so yeah that that time would not have been worth it <laughs> But uh, it is a chance-based thing, and I think it's raining. I think it's raining. And if you're wanting a bit of item storage, probably worth constructing steel barrels now and hooking them up to the output of your quarry, um, so you can just store a bunch of the ores, which then you can process from that. Um, you don't have to worry as much about filtering things. Uh, and yeah, just go ahead and craft a whole stack of bronze drills. That's, that's going to get you a bunch of resources. But yeah, speaking of uh, trying to automate your assembling of the bronze drills, yeah, bit tedious uh, until we get to assemblers, but um, we're we're a little bit far away from that just at this point in time. All right, but your resource gathering is now automated. Uh, might be time to make yourself the steel wire mill. Yep, you know, lots of these components to make. Uh, well, once you craft yourself that, um, you're going to be able to use this thing for making, surprisingly, wires. Um, obviously, you're probably going to be starting just with copper wires, and they're going to be used for either in the wire mill again, making fine wire, which we'll, we'll get to these bits in a second. But uh, yeah, you're going to need you're going to need a lot of wires in this uh, in this mod. Um, for now, it is going to live there. So now that you've got your wire mill, the components you're going to be making with the, the results of this are things like resistors, which you're going to need a lot of, uh, inductors, which you're also going to need a lot of, take a fair bit of wire and a little bit of steel as well, and capacitors, which um, we haven't talked about rubber yet, but that's what we'll get to next. But uh, yeah, you're going to need you're going to need a lot of these if you don't have like some other sort of auto crafting. It is definitely going to be worth setting up production lines for each one of these. Um, yeah, you're, you're going to need this. You're going to need this. And we'll probably talk about doing production lines a little bit in the future, but uh, essentially what you can do is set up a dedicated line just for making resistors. So you'll have the entire process for making paper as part of this line, um, the process for making coal dust, and the process for making this copper wire. So you potentially have two wire mills and a line uh, followed with the compressor that's turning the ingots into the plates. Uh, I don't know if you'd go as far as to have the copper processing happening at this point, um, but you can do things like that to set up all the machines in one go, which is pretty expensive considering you'll need like a whole line of machines, um, but it's going to save you a lot of time rather than trying to use the same machine for multiple things and manually taking things in and out. Uh, when, you, when you're crafting as many of these as you're going to be, that's that's not going to be sustainable. Another thing we should mention, uh, and you know this this isn't too bad crafting it manually. So this is kind of the recipe you'd get if you're using auto crafting. Uh, this is a mistake I made uh, playing through all the fabric, but uh, you get way more if you use an assembler. And uh, we also don't need paper. <laughs> so uh, if you don't have applied energistics or something like that, um, you'll you'll end up using the assembler. So you'll be getting the better recipes. Um, but if you're just setting up auto crafting, you might end up spending a lot more copper and coal dust on on these components than you need to, which is going to add up. And I think it's the same for inductors. You're getting four times as many capacitors. Uh, yeah, four times as many again for the same amount of stuff. Uh, but again, at this point, you can't craft these. 
because we're still working our way towards the analog circuit. But first things first, rubber. All right, let's start with the, the first stage of making rubber. So just to try and keep it a little bit easy to follow, um, we've started with crushing coal into coal crushed dust into well, coal dust eventually, if, if this is on, um, feeding into the coke oven because the first component you need is coke dust. Of course, you're probably just going to be using the coke dust you're generating from this thing if you're not using it all for steel, which means it might be time to build another coke oven. But this is one of the first components for rubber. And once you've got that coal dust in there, connect yourself up some water, pipe it into a mixer. A steam, steam, you know, that would have helped. That would have helped. And yeah, I've, I've gave up. Um, Pretending that I'm not in creative mode getting all these items. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you don't actually mind too much. And we're just trying to go through the process here. With that connected up, there we go. Uh, and that coke dust and water is going to start producing eventually raw synthetic rubber. Raw synthetic oil, rather. The next stage is to get yourself... Potentially another blast furnace. You could try and reuse one that exists. I actually don't know if you can make steel and the next thing at the same time. Um, but if we have a look at this, and we'll just set that to auto extract. So it's going to automatically pipe the fluid into this fluid input hatch. Uh, we can then, and yeah, we should have enough room here. Go for a fluid output hatch. Uh, once we get some steam going. And this is when our pipes are going to start getting really messy. Um, we should start to see some processing happening. And that is going to be turning our raw synthetic oil into synthetic oil. Now you might want to set up like some intermediate storage, like some tanks here, um, so you can build up a bit of a back stuff. Ah, but obviously I'm not too bothered, we're just showing you how it works. And then once you've got the synthetic oil, you're going to want to pipe that, or pump that, into a, another mixer, which will of course need some steam and probably an output facing a different direction. Uh, and then with this, plus some paper, let's get a decent amount of paper, um, that's going to start producing you your rubber sheets. Uh, so, yeah, keeping in mind, you can get paper from, well, actually wood pulp, which I'm assuming is macerating one log into a bunch of wood pulp. Maybe not a bad way to go. Or compressing sugar can straight into paper. And I think the compressor is actually, yeah, so that would get you six for three, whereas, yeah, you can get double paper from sugar cane. Um, using a compressor. Obviously you can get vanilla sugarcane farms, so that's not going to be too much of an issue, but again, this is another thing where you're going to need a whole bunch of synthetic rubber, so worth keeping a whole bunch in storage. And maybe setting up something like this, uh, you might be able to get away with using your coal dust from here, if you're not using it all for steel, which honestly, you might be. You might be. Now that you've got your rubber production sorted, you've got your steel, you've got your wire mill, you can produce a whole bunch of wires. Um, you can now go ahead and craft a bunch of capacitors. Again, at the moment, you've, you've got to do this all manually because we can't get to assemblers just yet. But um, all of this is just a bunch of, you know, processed copper, a bunch of rubber. Yep, we've looked at this. And yeah, that will be enough. I, would, I didn't mean to shift click the stack of analog circuits. Well, there we go. Uh, you're supposed <laughs> to be able to then craft a bunch of these. And with these analog circuits crafted, you are now ready to enter the electric age, which we're going to cover in the next episode, which hopefully doesn't take us long. See you then.